I was a caregiver for my brother basically for his entire adult life, uh, even before he got sick. My brother could not read and write, so I was his caregiver and I went along with him to his hospital uh, visits, his doctor visits, just to explain to him exactly what was going on and make sure he understood the things he was signing and that sort of thing. He had some liver issues. He was diabetic. And unfortunately, we weren't aware of advanced directives. Advanced directive is a legal document that shares with everyone what you would like people to know about your wishes. I don't think I realized the task at hand, how important it was until he actually did get sick. And unfortunately, we didn't have that discussion, you know, about what he wanted, uh, if he was incapacitated and unable to make decisions for himself. So it came down to uh, he had gotten sick uh, and we had to have these very difficult discussions, you know, um, after he was ill. It's really important because a lot of times when you're sick, and you're in, especially when you're hospitalized, and you may be confused, so you may not be able to make decisions, and therefore it's really important to have a healthcare agent, someone who can actually speak on your behalf. Quite often in our ICUs, we see a lot of that, where these discussions were not had with their doctors or with their family members. And so we often don't know what their wishes are, and by default, what ends up happening to people is a tube is put down their throat to be hooked up to life support. You want someone to be able to speak for you if you can't speak. So having an advanced directive is something that's been really important to me for a long time because as a chaplain, I've been there so often with families who didn't have an advanced directive, where the patient didn't have an advanced directive, and the family is really in conflict. They're not able to grieve. They're not able to share in the grief with each other because they're arguing about what they need to do. I think it's important because um, it, it was a very difficult for me to make decisions for my brother when I wasn't absolutely sure what his wishes were. Naming healthcare agent is really important. It's the very first step in, in writing an advanced directive. And I've always held on to that, that a healthcare agent is someone who knows you and that you trust. And then you want to fill out the piece of paper or go online and complete the advanced directive forms. So writing an advanced directive can be really complicated. It can be simple. It depends on how you want to do it. So you can write an advanced directive and get very detailed about things like feeding tubes and ventilators and procedures. And if you want to do that, you can certainly do it. And the advanced directive forms will help you with that. They'll prompt you with questions. You can also do things that are more simple than that. You can simply say, um, if I can't have the quality of life that I want to have, uh, ultimately, then I don't, I don't want to be kept alive. Um, I want to be allowed to pass away naturally. Um, so it's really up to you how much detail you want to go into, and it's important to think about that as you're writing your advanced directive. Documenting advanced directive is almost as critical as writing it, because if you don't document, if you don't put it in people's hands, then they're not going to know what you wanted. So what you want to do is make sure if it's in writing that you have multiple copies and you have them with your doctor, you have them with your healthcare agent. You know, I can't stress this enough, it's really important to have that conversation with your loved ones, you know, uh, so, that, so that, that you're aware of, of what they want and what they don't want. I really believe for uh, communities, especially in the uh, African American community, where you may not trust healthcare systems, that you really need to have that healthcare agent to make sure that that person is a person that you can trust and also that that person will be able to keep in and, and, and a safe place that advanced directive. We know that if people do this work ahead of coming into the hospital, that they receive the kind of care that they really want and that they're better able to cope with whatever's happening. I mean, no one ever wants to be in the hospital, no one wants to be at end of life, but what you hope for is that when that happens, it can be the best experience it can possibly be. It gives you a voice because you may not have one at the time that you need it. And these are clear choices you've made 
when you're healthy. I'm Rick Bennett, president of Johns Hopkins Bayview Medical Center, and I have an advanced directive. My name is Andrea Fitz, and I'm a program coordinator for the Department of Spiritual Care and Chaplaincy, and I have an advanced directive. I need Svigash and Shur. I need Harav Shabet Cholim Johns Hopkins. The Yeshli and Nichiot Ufiot Mukdemet. My name is Antoinette Joyner. I'm the co-chair of the health ministry at St. John AME Church, and I have an advanced directive. It's to me, Imam El Alamin, Mukhaliyad Umatan T. Baltimore, Anatakabun Tajihat. My name is Michelle Harvey, and I am an advanced directive representative at Johns Hopkins Bayview Medical Center, and I have an advanced directive. Soy Jesús Rivera, soy un capellán de Johns Hopkins y yo tengo una directiva anticipada. My name is Deborah Hickman and I am the founder and CEO of Sisters Together and Reaching and I have an advanced directive. I am Paulette Chase Lampkin and I have one. I am Dr. Rob Brzak and I have an advanced directive. I'm Reverend Paula Teague and I have an advanced directive. I am Reverend Christopher Brown and I have an advanced directive. I'm Panagis Galiatsatos, and I'm a doctor, and I have an advanced directive. Do you?